We're now joined here in our studio tonight by Dr. Prahalad. He's a pediatrician and a pediatric nephrologist at the Metha Children's Hospital here in Chennai. Dr. Prahalad, thank you very much. We know you've had a hard day today facing the media almost all day. Therefore, we're really appreciative of your time. Let's start by asking you, was this in fact um, caused by the H1N1, this child dying? The first thing is this child presented in, a, um, in septic shock. Child was in shock, had multiple organs which had failed, like the river, kidney, had respiratory, um, going into respiratory paralysis. His blood counts, his platelet count, he was coagulopathic at the time of presentation when we saw. As a nephrologist, they called me in to see a child with renal failure. Once we received the child into the pediatric intensive care unit of our hospital, we found the child to be very sick, thus ventilated. To be very truthful to you, we didn't know the cause for the shock for this child. We did send a lot of investigations. The thing that made us suspect was persistent low counts, falling platelet counts, and um, other tests non-contributory. We did think of the epidemic that was going on, which is swine flu, and did send, after informing the government that we might be having a child with swine flu, we did send the test across to King Institute Gindi, and that came positive. The question that uh, all of us raises, does swine flu cause shock? We saw a child with shock, circulatory shock, had multiple organs that had got damaged, and we saw the consequence of the end organ damage that we treated. Um, all the tests sent by us, like the virology, the blood cultures, the dengue serology, all up to now is negative. So we must take probably swine flu did cause this child to succumb. What about uh, the source? Have we got any idea, uh, doctor, about the source? Because we've been hearing this in the past few days that the child's father had been to Singapore. And, uh, you know, I mean, I don't even know if this is right. Is it fair to be actually saying stuff like this? I think it is. Uh, what we need to do is, at one point of time, we have had a child with swine flu positive and we have lost the child now. What we do is go back to the place where he lives or where he normally visits every day try to screen people around there to find out the source. Uh, to be very truthful and honest, I might live in a place, but I travel all around Chennai every day. So where I pick up this viral flu from is a question unanswered and nobody is to be blamed. And the father was negative? The father, the father came negative. I think in this situation, we need to go back, look at the places where this child visited or probably somebody would have given this child, but where from where he got it is a difficult question. Uh, to answer at this point of time. Right. Yeah, perhaps the public health department should take note of that as well. Also the fact that this is the season for a spurt in flu, as we understand, sir. Uh, what are the symptoms uh, that really make H1N flu, I mean, sets H1N flu apart from the rest of the flu? This is the most tricky situation as a medical practitioner that you face. You find almost every child walking into a clinic having fever, some running nose, stuffy nose or this season after the rains, we have had a lot of gastroenteritis. Swine flu, common presentation is a respiratory symptom like an upper respiratory tract, uh, nasal catar, running nose, blocked nose or cough. One third of them may present with gastrointestinal symptoms too. But what I tell people is, you treat these children as a viral flu or a normal flu or a gastrointestinal disease, within a day or two, they do not progress or improve as what you would expect. Think of swine flu. Not every child at the drop of the head, say with fever and cold, rushes and says, I have swine flu. Things that are warning signs that you keep are, one, a child who says, I'm tired and I want to sleep. This is the first sign I think you pick up saying that this child is going to go into shock or going to become very, very sick very quickly. A child who is active, playing around with cold and cough, yes, may have swine flu, but with first 48 hours, uh, the child doesn't progress or improve, then you look at swine flu and start doing a throat swab uh, to confirm swine flu. So you're saying don't get alarmed at the first cough that the child might have, right? The that I, I don't think, you take any case for that matter, not only swine flu, mm. you will have one-off case which becomes very sick and we do lose, lose the child. As a pediatric nephrologist who is working in a tertiary care hospital where we have a PICU or a pediatric intensive care unit, we face a lot of children who come in shock with multi-organ failure, in the sense that it can be any cause for the multi-organ failure. So we need to look at um, uh, uh, this as a, probably an eye-opener to look at probably do, does swine flu lead to multi-organ failure, renal failure, whereas 
so far what we have seen child presents with respiratory symptoms respiratory complications but here we had a child who had renal failure liver cell failure so we have to keep this in mind and probably progress from we're it. also hearing this word asthma that was constantly used in connection with this particular case uh, i think instead of calling it asthma we call it ards we call it ards which is a state of the lung where the lung fails um, it's called acute respiratory distress syndrome which progressive is the consequence of the um, uh, the end product of the swine flu right dr prahlad we're going to ask you to just hold on for a very few moments while we take a very short break but we'll get right back to this discussion with dr prahlad don't go anywhere <laughs> 